tell them guys it's easy work. It's easy work, man. Easy work. I'm the top dog. Gervonta Davis, nicknamed Tank for his power and aggressive style, Davis's modest size only gives his opponents a headache as he crushes the competition in his pursuit of championship titles. Showed outstanding boxing abilities from an early age. He began training at the age of five under Calvin Ford. The mentor once served 10 years in prison, and afterward, he started teaching kids boxing to help them avoid a similar fate. It was likely thanks to him that Davis didn't encounter problems, as shortly after, his father ended up in prison and his mother lost her parental rights. They were both on drugs and um, my, mo my mother left me and my brother in, in the house by herself, you know, so um, they took us into custody, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we, my grandma fought to get us back for about, she, about a good three years. By the age of 12, Davis had become a three-time national youth champion. Uh, yeah, that's right in your backyard. It was not down there. Due to his disproportionately large head and aggressive style, the Southpaw earned the nickname Tank, which he still goes by to this day. In 2013, at 18 years old, he turned professional and achieved 10 knockout victories. His talent caught the attention of Floyd Mayweather, who took Davis under his wing, leading to a rapid rise in his career. Gervonta Davis's first serious test came against Luis Sanchez. By way of knockout is the white and blue. He's undefeated as a professional. 13 victories, 12. Who had a respectable record of 17 into 4. Davis actively pressed. Very conscious of the power on that left hand. Confidently delivering punches at different levels. This Davis pounds his chest like he wants more. The two lightweights trade in the middle of the ring. And skillfully avoiding dangerous situations. Following his trainer's instructions, he adjusted his long range cross and by the eighth round, shifted to an aggressive mode, attacking at close range. Breaking through his opponent's defense, Davis began landing uppercuts in succession until the final bell ended the fight. What do you think of this kid's future? Um, it's, always the, it's always good to go out there and get the W. Um, he's young. He's still learning. Um, we look forward to him being world champion someday. Three months later, in a fight against Avila, Davis continued to dominate. It's so excited about this young man, as well as Floyd Mayweather. He actively used his long left punch and lead hook. Maintaining a middle distance. Despite the difference in class, Avila tried to attack. But Davis successfully countered and moved into the offensive. In the fourth round, he increased the pressure, delivering body shots to his opponent. Certainly disfigured and discolored on that virtually left the cheek of Avila. Javante Davis piling up points. He got to get his hands up. Cornered against the ropes, Avila showed resilience, but eventually. Davis finished the fight with a left cross and a series of uppercuts. The final touch was the lightning-fast destruction of Mario Macias in 30 seconds. Where Davis showcased the power of his signature gazelle punch. By early 2017, 
Gervonta Davis had 15 knockout victories in 16 fights and got the chance to compete for the IBF super featherweight title. Up to 59 kilo D. His opponent was the undefeated Jose Pedraza with a record of 22-0. Davis took the initiative from the start working actively on the body and using uppercuts. Fighting on the back foot, he confidently controlled the situation at middle distance, punishing the champion for every mistake. Pedraza held on thanks to his toughness and tried to catch the challenger. But Davis gradually shifted his focus to body attacks, which deprived the opponent of air. By the seventh round, Pedraza was exhausted and Davis seized the moment. A right hook from the hip hit the target. knocking the champion out and ending the fight. At 22, Gervonta Davis won his first world title. Victory came so easily to Gervonta Davis that he allowed himself to relax. Before his second title defense against the undefeated Francisco Fonseca, known for his aggressive style, Davis failed to make weight and was stripped of his championship belt. Despite this, the fight went ahead. Right hand of the body by fame trainer of who's a great fighter. Davis threw his signature combinations, but they did not have the usual effect. Fonseca skillfully counterattacked, enduring the onslaught. Gervonta tried to dominate, but the fight remained tense. It was only in the eighth round that he was able to use his counterpunching instincts. After a precise pullback, he didn't miss the moment, sending Fonseca to his knees. There were doubts about a punch to the back of the head during the finish, but Davis disagreed with this. In the spring of 2018, Davis decided not to change weight classes and aimed for the vacant WBA title. Fighting former champion Jesus Cuellar, who had defended this belt five times. In a battle of two southpaws, Davis showed himself as a master of single punches, skillfully maneuvering and gradually breaking down his opponent's defense with body shots. A precise liver punch staggered Cuellar. After which Gervonta once again assumed the role of Matador. Soon the fight ended with three knockdowns and a fall. In his next fight, Gervonta faced the experienced Hugo Ruiz, who had over 40 victories. But his defense couldn't withstand a straight punch, and Davis added the 20th scalp to his collection.
In his hometown of Baltimore, Gervonta Davis continued to confidently dismantle another contender. Already in the second round, demonstrating his superiority, he confidently engaged in close combat. Despite his dominance, fans were expecting more serious opponents. This is a pay-per-view star. Uh, he had the charisma, the will to win. He works extremely hard. He has a great team. And the only thing we can do is continue to push him, help him go to the top. And uh, he's one of the top guys in power for power right now. At that time, in the lightweight division, three championship belts were held by Lomachenko, representing Bob Arum's promotional company, with which Floyd Mayweather did not want to cooperate. Therefore, at the end of 2019, moving up to the 61 Kilgaz category, Davis decided to fight for the vacant WBA title. The opponent did not disappoint. 38-year-old Cuban Yuri Orcas Gamboa. An Olympic champion and former holder of two championship belts was known for his precision in the ring. However, Davis, working on both the body and the head, quickly took the initiative. Gamboa missed a hook, which allowed Gervonta to easily close the distance. Although Gamboa tried to avoid punches, Davis confidently controlled the ring, a big left uppercut, heavy delivering powerful uppercuts. Despite the veteran's resilience, Davis continued to attack, especially actively in the final rounds. World of trouble. Davis teed off on him. Gamboa trying to tie up in a slip. Employing tactics characteristic of Floyd Mayweather, his uppercuts found their target throughout the fight, ultimately securing victory for Gervonta. By the age of 25, Gervonta Davis had become one of boxing's brightest stars. But with popularity came trouble. In one nightclub, he got into a fight with a patron, for which he was arrested. The name of the opponent whom Davis could not knock out remained unknown. In February 2020, the boxer made headlines again when he attacked his girlfriend during a basketball game. Many thought this behavior was a result of his mentor Floyd Mayweather's influence, but it led to the champion's arrest. He was soon released on bail, but he remained under investigation for almost three years. His legal problems didn't end there. While driving his Lamborghini, Davis ran a red light leading to an accident that injured four people, including a pregnant woman. Davis was not only driving that Lamborghini when that crash happened, but he is also at fault. He fled the scene, but later turned himself in to the authorities. For this, he received 90 days of house arrest and three years probation. However, after violating the terms of his sentence, Davis spent 44 days in county jail. In his sports career, things were going better. In October 2020, Davis returned to super featherweight, where he was awaited by Leo Santa Cruz, a Mexican boxer nicknamed Earthquake, known for his combination punching. Santa Cruz held four championship belts and was ranked among the top 10 boxers regardless of weight class. With 37 victories, he had only suffered one loss, which he soon avenged. Gervonta had not yet faced opponents of such caliber, making his debut on pay-per-view. Davis mixed jabs with counter-uppercuts. 
aiming to break through Santa Cruz's defense. The Mexicans skillfully intercepted the attacks and actively countered, but there were no knockdowns. Encouraged by his success, Santa Cruz picked up the pace, and Davis was forced to respond with uppercuts. Following Floyd's instructions, Gervonta began to intensify his pressure in the fourth round. Even as Santa Cruz willingly engaged in exchanges, stepping back to a distance, Davis refocused on the middle range. While Santa Cruz skillfully worked from a tight defense, at the end of the sixth round, Gervonta, now with pinpoint accuracy, chose the moment for a decisive blow, putting all his power into it. Under Davis's onslaught, Leo Santa Cruz ran out of energy and found himself pressed against the ropes. Davis, switching from a southpaw stance to an orthodox stance, prepared his best punch. A devastating uppercut sent Santa Cruz into a knockout, and he lost consciousness for several minutes. Fortunately, he soon woke up with a smile on his face. Riding the wave of success, in the summer of 2021, Gervonta moved up to super lightweight, up to 63.5 Kuglers, and immediately aimed for the WBA title held by Mario Aztec Barrios. Barrios, a young champion with a powerful punch, had knocked out nine of his last ten opponents and remained undefeated with 26 wins. In this bout, which attracted attention not only for the title, but also for the most fashionable shorts. Barrios confidently attacked with his right hook and pinned Davis to the ropes. Despite being shorter in height and reach, Davis used feints to the body, forcing Barrios to lower his hands. Despite his physical disadvantages, Gervonta skillfully used his shorter stature to launch sudden attacks. His left cross landed precise blows that caught Barrios off guard. An unexpected lead hook stunned the champion, and although Barrios quickly got up, he immediately received another powerful blow. Despite this, he found the strength to continue fighting, surviving under Davis's onslaught. In the ninth round, surprisingly, Gervonta was behind on the unofficial judges' scorecards. Hearing this, he mobilized his reserves and the ring became too small for the two of them. When the outcome of the fight was already decided, Davis delivered a powerful liver shot. followed by a textbook left uppercut to finish the bout. This brought him his 25th victory and the title in his third weight class. What does it mean to you now to be a three division champion? You joined Floyd Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Manny Pacquiao, Julio Cesar Chavez and many greats. Listen, man, I can't, I can't, you know, compare myself to them greats yet. You know, this man, this man set the tone. You know, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm, I'm following his footsteps. So thank you for, you know, guiding me the right way, Floyd. Uh, I appreciate you. You know, Linda Ellaby, Al Heyman. I'm thankful to be in the position. Uh, once again, Atlanta, we did it, baby. Baltimore, we did it. He got the potential. When I met Tank when he was 14 or 15 years old, I told him I'll make you a world champion and you'll be one of the best someday. So I'm proud of him, and I want to thank everybody in Atlanta for coming out and supporting this event. Returning to the lightweight division, 27-year-old Gervonta Davis accepted the challenge of Isaac Cruz, known for his devastating punching power. Cruz, standing only 163 centimeters tall, earned the nickname Mexican Mike Tyson for his ability to knock out opponents with one punch and powerful combinations. For the first time, Gervonta was to face an opponent who matched his punching power. 
Cruz, swaying and moving with Mexican aggression, unleashed powerful hooks on Davis, aiming to send his head into the crowd. Although Gervonta had the rare advantage in size, he was forced to retreat. countering Cruz with single uppercuts. However, the challenger blocked most of his signature punches, though one did break through his defense. In the early phase, Davis feigned an uppercut, but suddenly switched to a hook, slowing Cruz's pace. Cruz began his attacks with body shots, simultaneously avoiding Davis's main weapon. By the middle of the fight, Davis had established a comfortable distance using a precise cross and his natural reflexes. Cruz, possessing a granite chin, continued to deliver powerful punches, keeping pace with Davis, which increased the intensity of the fight. Nonetheless, Davis secured a unanimous decision victory, allowing the judges to decide the outcome for the first time in seven years. And still, the undefeated WBA lightweight champion of the world, Gervonta Tank Davis. Gervonta's next opponent was Rolando Raleigh Romero, a powerful Cuban with a lethal left hook, who was undefeated and had finished 12 of his 14 fights early. Before the fight, Romero didn't hold back his words turning the bout into a personal grudge match. You a stupid fucking dwarf, man. I'm telling you, man, I can't even mess with your fucking head. I can't even mess with your fucking head. It's so fucking big, it's like this fucking big. And your fucking little T-Rex arms, man, my dick's longer than your fucking arms. This guy just here to talk. He trying to talk his way into the fight. That ain't gonna work. I'm going over the rules in the dress room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Davis slowly adjusted, working on his defense and taunting his opponent. Especially in the type of level. Romero tried to catch him against the ropes. But Gervonta, reading his movements, landed a decisive blow in the sixth round. Yeah, he seems kind of awkward, but in this fight, he's not the one. Despite the sweetness of the victory, Davis chose not to celebrate, maintaining respect for his opponent. I was thinking, um, as you know, this interview was coming up, as much as I wanted to be cocky, but I want to thank um, Roly. I want to thank his, his team. Um, we sat away like a man inside the ring, and uh, I wish him the best in the future. Having won eight consecutive title fights under the WBA banner, Gervonta sought new challenges, but faced disagreements with Floyd Mayweather, leading to a split in late 2022. Since then, their conflict has turned into an open feud. In his personal life, Gervonta also faced problems. Ten days before his next fight, his girlfriend called the police, claiming he had tried to kill her. After a tense conversation with the local sheriff, Davis managed to resolve the situation and return to his training. In early 2023, Davis stepped into the ring against Hector Garcia, a former Olympian and top-notch counterpuncher, holding the WBA title in the featherweight division. In the first rounds, Davis, as usual, studied his opponent. Then switched to active action by the fourth round. The champion gradually picked up the pace, and Garcia responded with combinations to the body. To that now uh, and uh, that's important for him I think and Davis again continues to lead with the left hand in the eighth round as the fight intensified a brawl broke out in the stands forcing the referee to pause the bout this happening will be quelled uh, and some folks leaving 
After the break, Davis increased the pressure from both fighters going toe -to -toe now. Oh. and landed a powerful left punch in the final moments. Garcia stood until the bell, but admitted he couldn't see anything. His corner made the only right decision to stop the fight. Securing his 26th knockout, Davis spoke about the victory with as much passion as if it were his first triumph. Uh, how would you assess this fight and your performance? Uh, just, uh, I finished though, um, I got stuff to work on, but, um. Like what? Everything. Uh, I'm a fighter and I'm, uh, uh, and I'm not retired, so uh, my cup never full. I'm always um, willing to learn. After a successful title defense, 29-year-old Gervonta Davis finally got the chance to have a high-profile fight against Ryan Garcia. Garcia, with 23 victories and 19 knockouts, gained popularity not only due to his social media presence, but also for his brilliant technique in the ring. With his precise left hook, he quickly became one of boxing's brightest stars. Before this highly anticipated bout, Tensions between the boxers ran high. I feel like I'm gonna break your jaw with the hook. I just see you. Don't even, you don't I just see you on the jaw. floor with a broken jaw. Go at the temple. You go at the temple. You don't go at the jaw. Say what? I'm gonna break your jaw. I promise you. Hey, don't even bring your mother or your daughter. Don't bring them. Oh, you're gonna see them. Hey, don't bring them. Don't bring them. I'm telling you. Don't bring them. At the beginning of the fight. You know, they, uh, Davis said he's after a measured first round, Davis was forced to retreat, and Garcia felt he had the advantage. But soon, Gervonta fired back. Garcia, eager to showcase his famous left hook, lost his balance and paid for it. Davis, not rushing things, used straight punches and countered with the technique of his former promoter, focusing on his opponent's body. After the sixth round, Garcia somewhat regained his composure but got carried away again, making his final mistake. Davis, crouching as low as possible, found a path to Garcia's liver. As a result, the sharp pain doubled Garcia over, and he couldn't continue the fight. This victory became one of the most significant in Gervonta's career, with the fight attracting over a million viewers on pay-per-view. I remember many years ago, we spoke, and you spoke to our production group. He said, I've watched Floyd. I watch Canelo. I look at all the tapes of Ray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao, all these guys. I'm going to be the face of boxing. Are you now? I'm definitely the face of boxing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this year, Davis turns 30, and for the past 10 years, he has known no equal astonishing opponents with powerful uppercuts and spectacular finishes. The only notable point is the absence of fights with key names in his weight category. Perhaps the major battles for the tank are still ahead. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I would appreciate a like, subscription, and comment under the video.